Hi, and welcome. In this video, we will continue to cover higher order polynomials and use the tricks that we have previously learned to solve for the rational roots. These techniques are important because many functions used in mathematics and in science are evaluated numerically by using polynomial approximations. In this next problem we are going to look at, we're going to find the rational roots of the polynomial through algebraic methods and try to recall some earlier theorems to help us along the way. So let's get started. The polynomial that we're going to be looking at is this one here, which is p of x is equal to 2x to the 5 plus 5x to the 4 minus 8x cubed minus 14x squared plus 6x plus 9. Now what we're trying to do is factor this polynomial into its linear combinations. We'll see what that looks like at the very end. But how exactly do we do that? Well, the steps we're going to use are to list the possible zeros with the rational zero theorem. We'll be covering that in just a second. Number two is once we find all of our possible zeros, we need to use synthetic division to evaluate those zeros. And what we're looking for is a zero remainder at the end. And we'll see that again in just a bit as well. Now we're going to repeat this process of step one and step two, step one and then step two. And we'll repeat it until we end up with a quadratic equation, something like x squared plus x plus one. We're just looking for that x squared at the end. And the reason we stop using synthetic division at a quadratic equation is because then we can typically easily factor that one out by inspection or use the quadratic equation. If we needed to, we could again do step one and step two again. But at that point, it's kind of not really needed. Now, before we get started with that, there are some tips to remember. These aren't required in order to solve the problem, but they help in the process of solving it. We can always use Descartes' rule of signs and the lower and upper bounds theorem. So let's take a look at Descartes' rule of signs right now. A little bit later, we'll take a look at the lower and upper bounds theorem when it's needed in the problem. Again, we're, we don't really need to do this step, but it's helpful to start it with Descartes' rule of signs so we have a general idea of what type of answers we should be coming out with in the problem. So Descartes' rule of sign is we're going to be looking at the variations in the change of sign of all these coefficients and these terms here. So we start with a positive term, another positive term, negative, negative, and then two more positive terms. And what we're looking for is the change in signs. So it changes once here from positive to negative. It changes again here from negative to positive. So now what that means is we have two or zero positive roots. So the number of variations in the sign minus any even number is the possible roots that exist in the equation. So that's why we have two or zero. So for example, if we had four variations in sign, then we would count down by an even number. So it'd be four, two, or zero. Now, how do we look at the negative roots? Well, for that one, all we do is we plug in a negative x. And when we do so, we're still only looking at the change in sign. So odd powers of x will change sign, evens will stay the same. So if I put in a negative x here, I get out a negative. If I put, plug in a negative here, I still have a positive. This will pop out another negative. So two negatives will make that positive. This will remain negative. This will change sign, and that stays a positive. Now we have one, two, three changes in sign. So for negative, we have three or one. Remember, we're counting down by an even number. And this is for negative roots. So this is just something to make sure to have a note of as we're working with our problem. But it's not a required step. So let's go ahead and take these away. Now remember, the first thing we need to do is list all of our possible zeros. Now the way we find a list of all of our possible factors or zeros of this polynomial are by listing all the possible combinations of p over q. Now we discussed this earlier in a different tutorial, so if you're unfamiliar with how to do this, you can go ahead and check that out. But for a quick reminder, this number here is your p, and this number here is your q. And we're looking for all the possible combinations with a plus or minus sign in front of that, 
because we can get a negative 2 times a negative 1 to get this positive 2 here. So by listing all the possible factors of 9, we have 1 plus or minus 3 and plus or minus 9. And we're going to divide that by all the possible factors of Q, which is 1. So we can go ahead and write 1 for all of them. And then we have plus or minus 1 for the 9 and a 2 for the Q. So here's a list of all the possible combinations. I usually start with the number 1 because it's an easy number to work with. Typically you'll want to maybe start with all of your positives and the lowest positive first and then work from there. So starting with number 1, we go ahead and list that here. Once we have our list of possible zeros for this equation, we're going to use synthetic division. Again, if you don't remember how to do that, you can go look at one of our other videos. We go ahead and list all the positive coefficients and the negative coefficients of our equation. I usually draw an arrow down here. So I know to bring this 2 straight down. And then we simply multiply 1 times 2 to get our answer. And then we add straight down and repeat the process. 1 times 7, adding straight down. Multiply across, adding straight down. Multiplying across, and adding straight down. So when we do synthetic division and we get a zero at the end like we did in this problem here, that means the number we started with is an actual zero of the polynomial. So we can go ahead and factor out that portion of the polynomial. And the way we do that is we write p of x is equal to x minus the number that we were working with in synthetic division. So we'll go ahead and minus the 1. The remaining of the polynomial is going to be made up of these coefficients here. And the degree is going to start with 1 less than what we started with here. So for example, we have 2. That's going to be our leading coefficient. x is going to be a power of 5 minus 1. So it's going to be 4. Then we continue writing the rest of the coefficients and the powers of x. So we got plus 7x cubed minus x squared minus 15x minus 9. So, so far we found one factor of this polynomial, x minus 1. The factor we found was 1. So let's go ahead and rewrite this equation like so. And now we repeat step 1 again. Remember, we did 1 and 2 right now. We listed all the possible zeros, and then we started to check them with synthetic division and got lucky on our first try. So now we repeat the process one more time. We're going to list all the possible combinations of p over q with a plus or minus. Remember, p is this number here. q is this number here. So we have 9 again. We have plus or minus 1 as a factor, plus or minus 3 as a factor, and plus or minus 9 as a factor. And we're going to divide that by all the possible factors of 2 which are only 1 and 2. Go ahead and do one more. So now we have to check all of these. These are all possible zeros. So I'll go ahead and start with the number 1, because that's the number I typically like to start with. We list all the coefficients of our polynomial, 2, 7, negative 1, negative 15, and negative 9. Go ahead and draw the arrow, and we begin our synthetic division. 2, 1 times 2 is 2, 9, put a 9 here, add it straight down, I get 8, 1 times 8, adding straight down, I get negative 7, and I end up with negative 16. So since I got a non-zero, that means 1 is not a possible zero to this polynomial here. Now I'm going to go ahead and try this one here. We can go ahead and make sure that we circle this and cross it out. Now remember, we only did the positive 1. We haven't tried the negative 1 yet. So again, we'll write the synthetic division. I'm going to try a positive 3 over 2. List all the 
coefficients again. And now we'll go ahead and continue with our process of synthetic division. Now this 2 is very helpful. Since we multiply 3 halves by 2, the 2's will cancel out and we get 3. We add straight down and get 10. Multiply across, we get 15. Adding to 14, multiplying across, we get 21. We get 6. Multiplying across again, and we have 9. Adding to 0. So now that means our 3 over 2 is a root of this polynomial. So now we got to list the new polynomial with the 3 over 2 factored out. We have the x minus 1 already. Now we factor out the x minus the number that we were looking at, which is 3 over 2. And we continue writing these coefficients and 1 degree less for our new polynomial, for the power of x. So we start with 2, x to the cubed, plus 10, x squared, plus 14x, plus 6. Now, one trick that we can do here, which isn't exactly needed, is we can note that out of all these numbers here, we can pull out a 2. So let's go ahead and do that. We got x minus 1, x minus 3 halves, pulling out the 2, so we'll place it like so. And then now since we pulled out the 2, we can write the new equation that we have inside, which is x cubed plus 5x squared plus 7x plus 3. This makes this equation a little more helpful when we're going to do our p's and q's again. Also, we can multiply this 2 into the inside of this equation here to get rid of the 2 that's in the denominator there. So let's go ahead and do that. This just simply simplifies the equation just a little bit. So we get 2x minus 3, x cubed plus 5x squared plus 7x plus 3. So this here looks a little bit nicer than what we had originally. Now this isn't needed, but it simply makes expression a little more easier and manageable to use. Now before we go ahead and move on, let's take a second look at this part of our work here. And the reason I want to take a look at this is because here all of our answers ended up being positive. Now this actually means something. When we have all of our answers positive, that means the possible zero that we were looking at is an upper bound to all of our solutions. So this 3 over 2 is going to be the highest positive value that we have for our root. So remember when we started with Descartes' rule of sine and we looked at the possible positive roots to this equation? We got the number 2 or 0. So here we have 1 and 2 positive roots. So that makes sense that this number here is the upper bound to our positive roots. That means all the additional roots are going to be negative now. Now this can help us moving forward and what numbers that we actually check. So let's go ahead and list the next equation that we have here. So again, we'll list all of our possible p and q combinations. Remember, this number here is p and the number here is q. So for p we have plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3. Combinations for 1 are simply 1. Now, since we just looked at that upper bound theorem and we used Descartes' rule of sine, we know there are no more possible positive roots. So we really only have negative 3 and negative 1 to check. I'm going to go ahead and start with negative 1. So we list the negative 1. We list all of our coefficients of the remaining polynomial, which is 1, 5, 7, and 3 draw my arrow and begin adding and multiplying. Here is 4. Negative 1 times 4 is going to be a negative 4. Adding it, we get 3, turns it to a negative 3, and we get a 0. And that means negative 1 is a solution. So let me go ahead and write our new equation after factoring out our new solution. All this is the same that we have. Now we're adding this new solution here. 
x minus the negative 1. And we continue writing our remaining polynomial. So let's go ahead and clean up this work a little bit and have the polynomial rewritten. So here's what we have now. Remember, we repeat step 1 and 2, which was find possible zeros and do synthetic division until we end up with a quadratic equation. So here's our quadratic equation. And this one, by inspection, we should be able to factor it out. So we have x minus 1, 2x minus 3, x plus 1, and this here factors out to x plus 1 and x plus 3. Now these here are all the possible roots to the equation that we started with. We factored it out into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 linear terms. Let's go ahead and have this cleaned up as well. And this is what the solution will look like. So the reason we factor out the polynomial into this form here is so we get a better understanding of what the function looks like on a graph. Again, we'll cover this a little more in detail later when we learn how to graph these polynomials, but I'm just going to give you a quick idea of what the graph actually looks like and why the factored form actually helps us. So the roots that we found for our equation or the zeros are going to be 1, 3 halves, and then we have a negative 1 here and a negative 3. Now, if we plugged in a very, very large positive number, say a million, we would end up with a positive number times a positive number times a positive number times a positive number. So the graph would be ending up somewhere in this direction over here. So we can go ahead and say the graph looks something like this. Now, the reason it doesn't actually go through the axis here is because of this squared function. But don't worry if you don't understand this just yet. Again, this is just a general idea of what to expect in later lessons.